Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Rahmani. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, as I, as uh, Dr. Rahmani mentioned, uh, I'm Fried and Asai, and I'm uh, at uh, California State University, Chico. So my talk today will be on my math, master thesis that I did with uh, Dr. Smiley back in 2010-9. Um, so it is a comparative study of strength assessment methods uh, for concrete columns, reinforced concrete columns. Um, before I start my uh, my presentation, I would like to um, talk to you know, say a few words about Dr. Smiley, as we as we mentioned uh, heard from a couple of other uh, presenters. He was Dr. Smiley was a very nice person, an excellent um, advisor, and, and uh, he was always um, smiling when you when you when you would uh, see him in office or uh, on campus. Um, he, as I mentioned, he was my academic advisors from 2008 to 2011, and uh, you know we, I met him um, in, in Afghanistan in 2007 when he was working on a project funded by World Bank, and that project was basically to bring uh, graduates from Kabul University to K State for graduate studies and. And I was one of those students who came uh, in the first uh, year of the program. Um, he helped me a lot with my studies. Um, uh, also helped me um, in the process of uh, inviting my family to, to the U.S. as well. So that was uh, very nice of him. Um, as we all um, know, it is he's, he's, he's very missed. So... Um, all right, so um, the research goals that we have, uh, we had in our uh, master thesis uh, was uh, to construct axial force bending moment diagrams based on moment curvature diagrams. Um, and then also to compare those uh, axial force moment diagrams constructed using moment curvatures with those who were, that were constructed uh, using traditional methods um, for, uh, for axial force bending moment diagrams. Uh, and to obtain a realistic uh, axial force FM diagram for concrete columns based on using a detailed analytical method, and we used fiber methods as I talked about, as I will talk about it in, in a couple of minutes. And also to identify w um, whether or not the optimum concrete column response is based on a concrete strain, compressive strain of 0 0.003. Uh, or, or what strain is that? Um, I would like to uh, mention that I, I, I don't, I would not go into details um, as, um, as I've, have forgotten all the details and equations and all basic uh, uh, complex uh, procedures with, that we did through my master's uh, study, but I will give you a gen general overview of, of the results and, and uh, uh, conclusions. So if you have any questions um, with regards to details, I will be more than happy to, to get back to you on, on that um, specific details uh, if, you have, uh, if you might have any questions. All right, so as we all know, um, uh, interaction diagrams, axial force bending moment diagrams are uh, traditionally constructed, uh, you know, using a simplified or a traditional method uh, by assuming the ultimate concrete strain of uh, 0 0.003. If it's unconfined, if you consider confinement, you, you just consider that the confined ultimate stress strain of concrete. And then you obtain, you know, the coordinates of points. Um, in this case, six or five, six points on, on the diagram, and then basically correct. So this is the very um, simplified version or you know, traditional version or method of of constructing these axial force bending uh, diagrams. Although they are simplified, they are quick and easy to to do it by hand. Uh, they may not be. The, the method may not be as accurate as, as we, want, we would like to be, we would like to have in some, some situations. Um, again, if, if it is confined, then instead of uh, um, 0 0.003, you consider that confined ultimate strain of concrete. 
so, so the moment curvature diagram or MC um, is, is basically you can draw uh, a diagram uh, relating the moment, the bending moment of a cross section to the curvature of that cross section for a given axial force. So let's say for, for a, uh, an axial force of 100 uh, kips, you can, you, can, you can draw a specific moment curvature diagram for the axial force. So one of, one of the goals we had was to find the maximum bending moment based on this on these diagrams and then use that axle uh, and that use that moment to draw the interaction force diagram um, instead of using the traditional method. Um, the detailed method, the detailed analytic analytic method, method that we used was a fiber method. And obviously as 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 you may know, you just uh, um, basically you divide the cross section into very, very tiny fibers. Um, and then you use a stress block, um, a, real, a realistic stress block, which is basically just a strain diagram of concrete and it's not a equivalent stress block that is, that is provided uh, uh, in the ACI. So in this case, it is more realistic, more accurate representation of what the cross section may go under um, when it is applied um, by a force and or a bending moment. Um, in this study, we used um, a software uh, which was developed by Dr. Smalley. Um, I think it is still used. Um, it is KSU RC software. Uh, Dr. Ashid may have more information about the update on this. I think the, uh, I, I thought he was also working on upgrading the software uh, to include more more features to it. But that was, by the time the software uh, used that fiber method, um, you could consider confinement and also plain concrete. So when, when we used the software, we always uh, selected the confined option so that uh, a confined um, 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 uh, condition was, was uh, considered. Um, so, so as I mentioned, we use the fiber method and also simplified method or traditional method to see which one is more accurate. Or um, so in this case, as you see, uh, this is a this is a moment interaction diagram, um, which which was uh, two of those uh, blue line shows the simplified version, um, just using those you know equivalent stress block. Uh, and then also use the, the red line shows the diagram which was obtained using a detailed method, which is a fiber method. As, 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 it, as we can see, the, there is a, um, a difference between these two diagrams in the sense that um, the detailed method will give us uh, a, a higher and more capacity of the, of the column for a given axial force. Particularly when the, the 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 axial force or the or when the the section the cross section is is above the ultimate uh, 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 strain of 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 reinforcement. Um, and also, this graph um, um, compares the traditional uh, method of uh, axial force bending moment diagrams versus versus the curvature based uh, uh, axial force bending moment diagrams. Again, the blue the blue line um, shows the uh, force moment diagram that was constructed um, uh, using a detailed method, but also um, not not a uh, through a curvature based method. The red line was a detailed method, the, the fiber method, but also it was considered or constructed based on the curvature-based method. What I mean by curvature-based method is that first we uh, we use the detailed method to construct the curvature-based for each of those axial axel forces, and then from the curvature moment curvature diagrams, we found the associated bending moment for that axial force. And then we drew the force, bending moment, force, the end interaction diagrams based on those two 
data points. As you see, um, there is a, a, a large difference between the simple or the traditional way of finding uh, winding moment diagrams versus the curvature based diagrams. Uh, the curvature based diagrams will give you a uh, will show a, a, a higher capacity um, for, for the column. And um, when you looked at uh, closely at this at this, we found that the the strain, the concrete strain, and by the way, this this is for this is um, these graphs are for uh, the, the confinement effect is, is considered in these graphs. If there was no confinement effect into the play, uh, both the curvature based and traditional method um, would have resulted the same bending moment, uh, axial force bending moment interaction diagram. So we didn't we didn't see any change in the response if it was not if the uh, the confinement was not considered. But when the confinement was considered and we used the detailed method, then we saw this this huge difference. And when we looked at the strain, at the compressive strain of concrete, we found out that, as you see in this, uh, let me see if I can use my, um, so as you see here, the strain, the, the compressive strain, the, the, the maximum compressive strain for different loads, um, axial loads, corresponds to about 0 0.004. Um, it is really not 0 0.003, or it is also not the ultimate confinement strain. Um, so it was very interesting, interesting to see that uh, a 0 0.004 would give you a larger uh, bending moment capacity for a given, for a given um, axial force. Um, again, this is, um, so we tested that um, we used the strain of 0 0.004 for a, for a, for a column, concrete column and used the detailed curvature based method and also the, the traditional axial force bending moment method. And we found that the two, these two graphs would be the same regardless of which method did we use. By the way, the difference was that in the stop 0 0.003 or the ultimate, uh, or the ultimate, um, uh, confined strain, you will be used as 0 0.004. Um, all right, so in conclusion, um, so we saw that the, the bending, the axial force bending moment diagrams constructed based on moment curvature diagrams would better represent the actual concrete columns response under axial force and bending moment um, um, forces. And this was true when uh, moment curvature diagrams were obtained using a, a, a detailed or fiber method in our case. I have to, I forgot to mention that we used, we, um, we, we um, compared our results with, ex uh, with existing literature, ex ex uh, experimental results in the literature. So that's what we uh, concluded based on those two. So it was, it was, uh, it was compared against those um, actual experimental methods, uh, results. And also the optimum concrete tumbled response may not occur at a concrete strain of 0.003. It's, uh, it depends on the axial force and also it depends on the shape of the concrete column itself, the cross section. But overall, um, we saw that the 0 0.004 was, uh, was a good, um, was the strain, concrete strain at which the maximum bending moment would, would occur at a given axial force, particularly when steel enforcement was uh, above or lower the strain, and the steel enforcement was lower than the ultimate steel strain. With that, thank you so much for your attention, for my short uh, presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to, to, to answer that at this time.